Well, the holidays are here in just a few days, and I think our goal should be to spread cheer, not COVID. So to find out the best way to do that, I think you're going to want to stay tuned. Be right back. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. How is everyone today? Just a few days before Christmas. Hey, Mary Beth. Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Dr. Fisher. We're happy to have you with us today, back with us today as we head into the holidays. Yes. Yes. Happy so to be here. We're head, we're, I mean, we're just days away and you've got some important things to share so that we are spreading only cheer. Yeah. Yes. So Dr. Fisher, take it away. So, you know, it's a, it's a hard Christmas again this year. Um, very unfortunately, we are in the midst of another surge of COVID. Um, this surge is a little bit unique in that it is both the Delta variant, which we've been struggling with for the last months, but also now we have the new Omicron uh, variant. We don't know whether Omicron's worse, better. Uh, we, what we do know is it's far more contagious. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing lots of breakthrough cases, but there's very good news. The good news is that booster doses of either Pfizer or Moderna are effective against Omicron. So while just the first two doses may not protect you as well, if you're eligible, go and get that booster. Six months after your first two, get the booster, and that will absolutely give you protection against um, Omicron and also, of course, against Delta. Okay. And we hope against whatever variants, you know, come on in the future. So and that's probably the biggest message for today is the boosters work. For people who got J&J &J the first time, you need a booster as well. Go ahead and get either Moderna or Pfizer. Both of them will give you protection against Omicron. You know, one you know, thing, one, can I just say that we, uh, our fault, Mary Beth, we did not give Dr. Fisher a proper introduction oh, for yeah. someone who, you know, we're, Dr. Fisher, we're so used to you. We just say Dr. Fisher, like everyone knows, but just in case someone doesn't know, maybe Dr. Fisher, just tell us a little bit about, uh, a little bit about yourself and your role now. Please. Sure. So I'm a pediatric infectious disease subspecialist. So I'm a pediatrician. Um, and I was um, formerly the chair of pediatrics at Monmouth Medical Center. Now I'm still at Monmouth Medical Center as the uh, director of clinical and medical excellence, but I'm also the uh, special advisor to the commissioner of health in Trenton. So um, I'm happy to be doing a little bit of everything. And one of the main things that I do is talk about COVID-19, the vaccine, masks, uh, physical distancing, testing, contact tracing, quarantine, isolation, all of the things we can do to protect ourselves and make this, this holiday season as safe as possible. Right, right. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. Right. And we're happy to have Dr. Fisher too, because this is all information that's coming from, you know, we'll call it boots on the ground right here in Monmouth and Ocean County. So we know exactly what's going on. So yes, we're so happy to have you as a guest with us today. So holiday testing, what about getting tested before we go see our family and, and yeah. friends? Yeah. So, so we're trying very hard to make testing more available because we know that people who have been immunized and have been boosted can still get breakthrough cases. That happens with any vaccine. And you may have such mild symptoms that you don't even know that you're infected. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to a, a gathering, a family gathering, being with the people you love, it makes sense. Go ahead and get tested before you go to that family gathering. The tests are now available. Um, we're trying to get them to be given out uh, by the pharmacies for free. If that's not available, you can buy them. And then your insurance companies, if you have an insurance, the insurance companies will pay for them. Oh. In any case, it's a small thing, a small price to pay to feel safe about meeting safely uh, with all of your family and all of your relatives. Now, it's not absolute that you have to do this, but certainly if you have relatives that you're gathering with 
and they're compromised right. either because they're older or because for some reason they weren't able to get vaccinated or they have underlying disease like cancer, high mm -hmm. blood pressure, heart disease. We really want to protect them. We know that, uh, you know, more than half of people who have died from COVID so far are people over 65. So whenever you're gathering with extended family, think about getting tested. Think about doing that home test so you're comfortable that you're going to be, that you are not currently infected and that you can go to that gathering safely. Dr. Fisher, how do you feel about gatherings with what I'm going to call a mixed crowd? Some are vaccinated, some are not vaccinated. Ideally, you would like to go to a gathering where everyone's vaccinated. Of course, sometimes that's not possible. For instance, children under five can't yet be vaccinated. So if you're going to a gathering with those children under five, you just need to know what kind of circumstances are they in? Because we know that in families where the parents are immunized and where the older siblings are immunized, those children under five are very unlikely to get COVID. On the other hand, if no one in the family is immunized, that's sort of the highest risk okay. situation. And then you have to think about what are my risks? You know, do I really want to go to a party where there's gathering? There's probably going to be some drinking. People are going to let down their guard. If you're eating and drinking, you can't wear a mask. Um, everyone's going to want to hug everybody and, you know, kiss the new babies. Mm -hmm. So think about whether or not that's safe for you and safe for your family. Because if you get sick, then you're, you're potentially going to expose others uh, within your family. So it really is an individual uh, thought and you really have to kind of weigh those risks and those benefits. Right. We want everybody to gather as much as we can. We know that people are depressed, that people are anxious, that people are tired of COVID. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the, and the American Academy of Psychiatrists have declared that there is a mental health emergency among adolescents because of all the anxiety and isolation that COVID has played over this last year all the things our children have missed, graduations, birthdays, all kinds of celebrations. We know over 140,000 children have lost a caregiver. So this has been a very, very tough year. We don't wanna make it tougher by saying, don't gather at the holidays. What we wanna say is gather, but do it safely. Mm -hmm. And the safest gathering is one where everyone's immunized, everyone's boosted that can be boosted, and if you're, if it's a big party indoors and you're not sure, it's okay to wear a mask. So if you go to a, if you go to a family gathering or any gathering for that matter, and now a few days later, what might be some symptoms to look out for that would say, hmm, you know what, maybe I do need to be tested? So the symptoms are for COVID or for influenza and remind me to get back to that because we are in the midst of an influenza yeah. outbreak as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the symptoms are fever, aches and pains. Um, you might wake up in the middle of the night with chills, um, headache, feeling like you're kind of run over by a truck. And then with COVID-19, that loss of taste and smell, that does seem to be special for COVID, um, the special gift of COVID that no one wants. <laughs> Um, but you can't really very well tell COVID from influenza. So if you're feeling sick, it is important to talk to your physician because we have medicine for both COVID and influenza, and it's not the same. So we have very good medicines for influenza. They've been around for a long time. We know they're safe and we know they're best. They work the best if they're started early. early. So as soon as you get those symptoms, Find a way that you can go get tested. If it's influenza, we know what to give you, Oseltamivir or Tamiflu. Um, but we also have, there, there are three other medicines we can use uh, for influenza. Walenza, um, there, there's a new one now, Biloxivir. So there, there are medicines for the flu. And then if you have COVID and you're at risk, there are also things that we would want you to do. 
ask your doctor whether you should go get monoclonal antibodies. We know that those monoclonal antibodies prevent you from getting more severe disease. In the very near future, we're pretty sure we're gonna have some oral medicine, a pill made by Merck and a pill made by Pfizer that also can prevent progression. But those are not yet authorized for use and we don't know exactly who will be able to get those pills and how you will get the pills. So for now, if you have COVID, we definitely want you to talk to your doctor right away. You may be eligible to get the monoclonal antibodies, which can prevent you from getting sicker. If you do get sicker, if you get short of breath, if you're having um, wheezing cough, we know that, that uh, particularly influenza triggers asthma. So if you have underlying asthma and it's triggered and you get an asthma attack, it may be because you also have a viral illness. So this is the time call your doctors, make sure what's happening and call them first because if you're sick, we don't really want you to go sit in a waiting room and expose other people. Right. The antibodies, is that, how is that delivered, Dr. Fisher? Is that, an, is that the infusion that people talk that, about? That's correct. It's an infusion. It can either be given into a vein or in some cases it can be given under the skin, but generally it's given into the veins. Okay. So there's things we can do, but we have to, we, I, I guess you really can't do anything until you get tested and actually know your situation. Again, the importance of, of testing. So if, if it is influenza, is, do we know it's influenza because you, you rule out COVID? Is that? No, there, yeah, there are, there are also um, tests you can get for influenza. Now, right now we are definitely having um, a, a moderate to high amount of influenza throughout the state of New Jersey. And here in Monmouth, Monmouth County, we are in the high range. So there's lots of influenza around. So I would say if you have flu-like symptoms and you test negative for COVID, you probably have the flu. Every emergency room has a specific test they can do to look for influenza. But again, when you're sick, you don't necessarily need to rush to the emergency room and sit in a, in a waiting room and either expose others or get exposed yourself. So better when possible, call your doctor. Hopefully everyone has a doctor. That is really an important thing. Your doctor knows you, your doctor knows what medicines you're on. So call your doctor and get some advice as to what to do next. Don't, don't sit on it. <laughs> Correct. Yes, Correct. Don't. Because both the COVID medicines and the influenza medicines work best if they're given right away. All right. Important to know. Again, we're, we want to spread cheer, not COVID. And exactly. we, all, we all have to do our part here. So I didn't realize we were also having an influenza outbreak on top of, on top of all the other good things happening this time of year. Happy holidays, right? Right. But this, this was, this has always been typically flu season. Anyway, yes. Right? Yes. So it was lower last year because we were probably all walking around wearing our mask. Now that's sort of, you know, people, like you said, people are letting their guards down. So here we go back to flu season again. Correct. Yeah. And it started a couple of weeks ago in December, which is when it generally starts, usually peaks in uh, January and it's, our rates are going up uh, nicely. Not nicely, yeah. are going up, unfortunately, as would be expected. If you wind up being diagnosed with COVID, and again, a mild, a mild situation, not requiring hospitalization, what might be what? What do you need to do? You you, you get your medicine or what, whatever it is, you, you're diagnosed. What do you need to do now? So the first question is going to be: Do I need the monoclonal antibodies or not? So monoclonal antibodies are for people who have risk factors to get severe disease and they absolutely work. So that's, that's number one thing that you have to think about. The next thing is you have to isolate yourself from others. And that's, we're talking isolation here. You right. Isolate yourself from your family. COVID can obviously go through a whole family, but interestingly enough, only between 30 and 50% of family members get COVID when one person has it. So if you isolate, you can protect your family from getting it. So isolation means you stay by yourself, okay? All, you stay by yourself for 10 days. 
Mm -hmm. um, and longer if you have symptoms for longer or if your immune system doesn't work well. So 10 days is minimum. And then after that 10 days, you can come out of isolation. Now, quarantine is something a little different. Quarantine is for close contacts. So let's say I'm diagnosed with uh, COVID today. The people who live in my house are close contacts. So they would be quarantined, but they shouldn't be close to me. I'm isolated. So I stay away from them. They can't go to work. They stay away, but they're in quarantine. Now, the rules are if you're vaccinated, you actually don't have to quarantine at home unless you have symptoms. If you develop symptoms, then you need to get tested. But I'm, I get COVID. My household members should stay away from me. They should be tested about five days after their exposure to me, after their last exposure to me. And then if their tests are negative, fantastic, that's great. They can uh, come out of quarantine if they need a quarantine at seven days. Okay. If they're vaccinated, they didn't need to go in quarantine in the first place. Um, and then if they're positive, then they, they that would then go into isolation and they would stay isolated for, again, a minimum of 10 days. It's what are the symptoms? It, well, it, everything is confusing. You know, it just, yeah, true. it that's just true. is. But what about if someone, if you're home, let's say, and you're isolating or quarantining, what might be some of the symptoms to look for that might mean, you know what, you need to be in a hospital? How, what, what uh, tips the balance there? So, so, uh, so the mild symptoms are, you know, runny nose, fever, body aches. Kind of like a cold. Exactly like a cold. It's okay. Exactly like the flu. The things that get you to a hospital are difficulty breathing. You can't take a deep breath. You're having trouble breathing, pain when you're breathing. You have cough, that's a significant cough. At that point, you need to check to make sure you're getting enough oxygen into your system and need for oxygen would certainly be the reason to go to the hospital. All right, so that's an important thing for people to remember. So if, yeah. it's, if you're in respiratory distress, that's, yeah. a, that's a signal you need to get to the hospital. And a lot of people have um, what we call a pulse oximeter right on your phone, where you can measure how much oxygen you're getting. So if you have it on your phone and it measures, you know, less than uh, less than about 95, it should normally be 95 to 100 percent. If your oxygen saturation is starting to drop into even into the low 90s, you need to call your doctor. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fisher, what is the severity of the hospitalizations that are currently presenting themselves compared to last year? So, so that, uh, that may be the little bit of good news. So it seems that we're having almost as many discharges as admissions. So the number of people in the hospital, although it is going up, it's not skyrocketing like it did in the past. Good. Now, you know, this could change in the next two days because Everything with COVID changes fairly quickly. Um, but what we're seeing is we are seeing uh, some younger people being hospitalized. Some of them are getting into trouble. Um, within, the last, um, within the last week, we've had two deaths of people under 30. Um, so, you know, it's not, uh, it's just not a, a benign disease. So we, we know that, that younger people absolutely can get it. We know that older people are much more likely to end up in intensive care, but we want everybody to be protected. Are some of the cases with the younger adults or children because of a lack of vaccination, or is it also because of just underlying conditions? 75 to 80% of people in the hospital are not vaccinated, yeah. or and about 5 to 10% are partially vaccinated, and another uh, 10 to 20 percent are fully vaccinated. So there are breakthrough cases that right. do end up in the hospital. Most of those people do have underlying problems, right. immune problems, so that they didn't respond as well to the vaccine as we would have liked. Yeah. All right. So um, vaccinated. Yes. Really do need to Thanks. get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody who can get boosted, please get boosted. Take it seriously. I, I still feel like for for some people, there is um, a, a bit of, well, more than a bit, but some denial going on out there. 
Yes. Yeah. And our hospitals are starting to get overwhelmed. We, we know that uh, we, we not only have people with COVID in the hospital, we have people with influenza in the hospital. And then we have all of the people who sort of postpone um, their health needs over the last year and a half because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And they're now finding themselves hospitalized so that even before COVID hit, we were already pretty full. So now with COVID admissions going up, and we are up over a thousand, um, we're concerned that that we we are you know asking all of the hospitals to get ready with surge plans for what we do if we have another another uh, spike like we have in the past. All right. Well, Christmas coming up in just a few days. I mean, really, and then New Year's going to be a lot of gatherings. So, Dr. Fisher, you're you're absolute like do this, do this. What do you want to say? Let's clear. Listen, guys, listen. Number one, if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you're eligible for a booster, get the booster vaccine. Get tested before you go to a gathering and consider if you go to the gathering and you're not very comfortable with the way things were, get tested five to six days after the gathering or three to five days after the gathering be sure that you haven't picked up COVID. Um, If you're sick, stay home. If you do feel sick, try to find out if you have either influenza or COVID because we have medicines that we can use to help you get better more quickly. And even with all that, please, this is a time where we all need to kind of renew and refresh Mm -hmm. and get back with our families just as much as possible do it safely. Thank you. Well, Dr. Fisher, thank you so much for your message and our our sincere wishes for everyone out there to be spreading holiday cheer, only cheer, but lots of it. Okay. Well, remember, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr. We'll see you next time on Scan FYI. And we're going to take a break for a few weeks after this. So it was very important for us to have Dr. Fisher give her um, spread this very important message about COVID to everyone out there. Thank you again, Dr. Fisher. Stay yeah. safe. And one right. thing I did forget to tell you, please get your children immunized. So we can get children down to age five immunized. We don't yeah. yet have the vaccine for under five. and We probably won't get it till the spring, but this is a great opportunity those five-year-olds to to 16-year-olds, they're now totally eligible. Get them vaccinated as well. We don't want them getting sick. We don't want them being um, quarantined and taken out of school. Right, right. Well, thank you again. Uh, Holiday greetings to everyone. Thank you all. All right. Take care. Take care. Be safe.